everybody, it's Howard here, and welcome to the last in the current series of the Man by Cow podcast. My lovable orphan sidekick Rufus isn't here at the moment because he's in the kitchen mixing up the crisps and preparing us some drinks. Do you want orange pop or cherry aid? Oh, orange pop, please. With gin or vodka? Both, thanks. Well, listener, it's all been a bit hectic recently, what with Uncle Tobias exploding and that very long dog turning out to be two dogs. So this week we decided we're just going to sit on the sofa and watch television and just generally avoid interruption. Here we go. Uh, there's your drink. Oh, yeah. um, some crisps. Nice. Oh, and here's the mail. Oh. Um, I'm just going to go and smash the doorbell with a hammer. Good plan. Ooh, a handwritten letter. That's unusual. Okay, that's... Uh... Good. Uh, here we go. Dear Rufus. That's weird. Maybe they can spell Howard. Dear Rufus, a few months ago I had a car accident and I had to have both my legs amputated. So to cheer myself up in the hospital, I listened to the Man by Cow podcast. One week, while I was listening to a bit with just you in, I laughed so much that my legs grew back and I could walk and run and play keepy uppy with a football. I love keepy uppy and I'm well good at it. My best ever is six keepy uppies. Everyone in the office was really amazed, and even Mr Barrytown didn't really mind when, on my last kick, I got him so hard in the head with a ball that now he has to live in space. But then, later, after I'd worn myself out, I was listening to another episode of your podcast, and Howard came on unexpectedly, and he was so rubbish that both my legs fell off again, and I got rickets, and my boobs stopped working. Now my doctor says I need prosthetic boobs like they have in America, which is a bit weird because he hasn't even said anything about prosthetic legs yet. Anyway, I thought I'd write to say that I think you should get rid of Howard because he's a right rubbish. Hey, I, uh, I smashed the doorbell. Uh, yeah, 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 I heard. And I cut the phone line as well. Oh. So there's no way anyone's turning up and embroiling us in some ridiculous adventure this week. What about cell phones? What? Uh, mobile phones. Good point. Give me yours. Okay. So, did you tell the listener that we're just going to watch TV this week? Yep. And did you mention that we're recording in the nude? No, I thought we were keeping that secret. Oh, sorry, apparently not anymore. Oh, well, never mind. Welcome, my friends, my friends, to the Man by Cow podcast. Nudie special. We're getting ready to go now. To spend some time with Man by Cow. They're going to take us to the moon. Let's put our feet up and watch some television. Ooh, okay. Serial bigamist Norman Fiddler, whose only defence was that all three of his wives were in fact the same person, was described by Judge Friday Fitzharvey as a trigamist and condemned to serve a minimum of three consecutive life sentences in Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison. Ruth, Norman I don't want to watch this. Turn this over, please. Okay. Oh, no, not this rubbish again. Oh, I like this. Leave this on. In every corner of existence, the sun never sets on the devoted fan of the most popular show in TV history, Treason. The British royal family, they had it all. The jewels, the titles, the palaces, but now all they have is one chance. One chance to win, one chance to live. Only one can survive, the rest will die. Tonight on Treason. Treason. Six epoch changing months ago, a woman had an idea. That woman was Rosamund Bathwater, and the idea would change the faces of society and television forever. Well, I was in a restaurant chatting to my friend Sophie, who works for television, and we got onto the subject of the royal family. You know, all them princes and queens and that. Sophie said we'd never get rid of them because of all the tourist money they bring in, especially from North America and Scotland. Well, I said, we just need to think of a way to abolish the royal family that will also attract tourists. That's just common sense, isn't it? So I said, what does everyone love? Television. And what else does everyone enjoy? Violence and murder. So I suggested, just for a laugh, that we should combine the two. Lock the royal family in their own palaces and castles, cover it with television cameras, like in that big brother, and give them weapons. Then you tell them, at the end, there can be only one. 
and whoever's left standing gets a small terraced house in Preston and a modest pension until they die of natural causes or car crash or whatever. The thing is, I just meant it as a joke. I never thought she'd take it to her bosses at television. I never thought they'd suggest it to the government. And I certainly never thought that it would actually happen. Rosamund Bathwater was wrong. Just eight days after that historic conversation, every member of the royal family was arrested. While their homes were fitted with the most sophisticated and comprehensive TV camera coverage in preparation for the televisual event that has gripped the world. You're guilty because you watch it. They're guilty because they play it. We're all guilty because we love it. The revolution has been televised. Treason. It's Wednesday, it's nine o'clock, it's time for today's highlights. We're coming to you live from the commentator's booth at Windsor Castle. I'm Toby Longstocking, and with me, as ever, is Archbishop Edward Lilo. Hello, Toby. It's good to be here. That's enough chit-chat. Today we're going straight to the live cams to see the Earl of Rochester facing Princess Jasmine. Even as we speak, Toby, Rochester is making his first mistake. He's underestimating Jasmine. He can't bring himself to slice her head off with a sword he grabbed off the wall. Oh my god, what's he doing? He's put the sword down. He's trying to talk to her. Looks like he's forgotten the first rule of treason. Trust no one. Trust no one and never take your hand off your weapon. Those are the first and second rules. Kill them before they kill you. That's the third. Yes, although strictly speaking they're not rules, just very good advice. And it's advice that Rochester won't be forgetting in a hurry. Wait a minute. Yes he will. He's forgotten it already. Because he's dead. And dead men don't learn lessons. Except lessons in how to be dead. And not even them, because they don't need to learn how to be dead, because they're already dead. Now let's go over to Jimmy Sticks for some background. Rochester has long been portrayed in the press as a figure of fun, ever since the unfortunate incident 15 years ago when, during a state visit by the King of Denmark, he publicly fouled himself and his wife. I have to say, I think getting stabbed in the genitals by a nine-year-old girl is going to do nothing to remedy his poor public image. Oh, well, welcome back, listeners. Something quite surreal is happening in our house just at the moment. A herd of enormous cows have chosen to use our living room as a corridor. Good morning, Uncle Dennis Quaid. It's not, you know. It's flaming not a good morning. Well, well, it is a morning, but it's not good. It's bad. If anything, you should say bad morning. Go on, say bad morning to me. It'd be more appropriate. Oh, Uncle Dennis Quaid, what's wrong? I got arrested. Did Rufus tell you that? Me, Dennis Quaid, star of Inner Space, and that one where the guy talks to his dad in the past. Well, what'd you get arrested for? Nothing. That's the blistering banana of it. I was just trying to sell some grass to a journalist. The next thing I know... I've got five policemen sitting on my chest and punching me in the moneymaker. Dennis Quaid, it is illegal to sell marijuana. Jesus, Howard, keep your eye on the ball, why don't you? I wasn't trying to sell drugs, I was trying to sell grass. That can't be illegal, it's everywhere. Oh, so you mean, you mean actual grass? And it's not like I stole it either. Although, to tell you the truth, mate, I could have done, because there's no security protecting most of it. Well, so where did you get it from? I grew it, in the garden. It was easy. In fact, all I had to do was persuade the gardener not to mow the lawn for a few weeks and the stuff just appeared. It was like it had been hiding under the lawn. Hold on, so why do you want to sell grass? A guy in the pub told me I could get 30 smackers a bag. But then I met that blasted journalist and instead of paying me, he put it on the front page of his newspaper. The trouble is, I've got 150 kilos of it upstairs so I thought I'd better get rid of it. And then you bought a herd of cows. I bought three herds actually, just to make sure, you know. I'm taking them up to my room now so they can get chomping down on some premium grade turf and solve my surplus drug problem. Okay, no, I'm, I'm, I think that's fine. It's a very clever idea. Just don't let Uncle Vince find out about them, will you? Why not? Why not? He distrusts anything that's got more legs than he does. That's why he never turns his back on the kitchen table. Oh, and why he spends so much time with Pete. You mean no legs, Pete? That's the one. Okay, I'll make sure the cows walk past his room quietly. Hey, stop mooing, you bastards! You're hey, how are you? Get in here! Today's episode of Treason about me because they... Okay. Come on, We're all it. guilty because we love it! The revolution has been televised. Treason. It's the 
Thursday. It's nine o'clock. We've got three severed limbs and a stiff. It's time for treason. Let's go straight over to Archbishop Edward Lilo reporting from inside Buckingham Palace. Well, Toby, I've been following the Duke of Stansted for over an hour now, and I'm becoming increasingly convinced that there's going to turn out to be a very good reason for it. He's currently camped in a small defensible stronghold. Or, to put it another way, he is hiding in the toilet. The Duke of Stansted, or Duke Dastardly as he's become known in the tabloids, is currently 322nd in line for the throne. Just after the formidable Ariadne Francine, who still holds the record for most kills at a staggering 32 and a half, earning herself the nickname the Duchess of Death. And not because she's Dutch, or Death because she is neither, just very, very dangerous and Belgian. Hold on, I can hear a movement in there now. Yes, something is definitely happening. We thought he'd gone into spend a sovereign, but now it looks a lot more likely that he's having a crap. Wait, no, he's coming out. He thinks he's safe, but wait, what's this? I don't believe it, Toby. We saw her die on Sunday. We, we watched her own corgi rip her leg off with its teeth and the Duke of Edinburgh used her to beat her to death with a foot end. Don't worry, Archbishop, you've not gone mental. It's true. It's the Queen, back from the dead. We fixed her. We gave her a brand new cybernetic leg with jet boosters, extra stamping weight and flashing blue lights all down the side. Having that metal foot brought down on your head would be like trying to wear the Titanic as a hat. Painful, deadly, and it makes your head look stupid, and flat, and dead. I do not see how the Duke of Stansett is going to escape this one, Toby. Well, he's a pretty resourceful fellow. So far, we've seen him masquerading as a portrait of himself to catch his victims off guard. And, through a combination of cunning and cowardice, he's managed to survive being blown up, shot in the head, and murdered. This is not a competitor to be underestimated. His statistics show that he has made 14 kills in a total of zero confrontations. That's some pretty darn productive cowardice if you want to ask me about it. And if you do want to ask me about it, tune in to Ask Toby about it tonight at 10. It's all, it's all kicking off here. The Queen's advancing on the Duke. He's frozen with fear at the thought of that bionic leg stamping his throat to death. And wait, oh no, look at that. He shot her. The Duke of Stanton has shot the Queen out of the game. Archbishop, are you telling us that the Queen is dead? Do you have confirmation of the kill? Well, Toby, he shot her in the face, a 97-year-old woman. I think it's fair to say her chance of winning has just become very slim. But what about her new leg? A bionic leg is probably fine, but nobody's going to bet on a leg to win, especially if it has to drag a dead old lady around behind it. Well, it looks like we won't be watching the Queen's Christmas speech this Christmas unless she broadcasts it from heaven, which she won't do, as there's no TV cameras in heaven, and even if there were, she wouldn't, because it's impossible, so she can't. Ding dong, viewers, the Queen is dead. Long live Duke Dastardly, but probably not, because in treason, no one long lives, because the name of the game is death, although the show is called Treason. Let's go over to Jilly Sticks for some background information on the Duke of Stansted. All the viewers may remember the unfortunate incident 15 years ago, when, at a banquet held by the Prime Minister of Turkey, the Duke got confused over which fork he was supposed to use and accidentally ate his wife. Treason's so good. I, I have to admit, treason is pretty good. I enjoyed that. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, idea, idea. What, what? Why don't I get in the flashback cupboard and we can watch it all again right this very now? No, how? that's not what the flashback cupboard's for. Yeah, flashing flashing back. back to something that just happened. Just yeah. watch it on treason plus one. Oh. Also, everyone's already heard it. They don't want to hear it again. It if, you're gonna, if you're going to flashback, yeah. do it, but flashback to something good, something interesting. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, uh, this morning, I did this humongous poo. It took, like, ages. It just we, didn't want to leave my bum. We don't want to listen to you having a crap no one wants to hear that. Why you not? sitting on the toilet grunting and splashing. That's going to be horrible. It's got to be something more interesting than that, hasn't it? Like a conversation or an adventure or something. Have like, like, uh, or, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'll do. Yeah. Let me show you what I mean, what? all right? I'll get in the flashback well, cupboard. Get in the flashback cupboard. I'll have a flashback and then, flashback? you know, just to show you what I'm talking about, all right? Oh. Here, just, yeah, out of the way. Oh, okay, let me get... Okay, God, God you think she's just so good at flashing Okay, switch it on. Yep, fine, I'm turning it on. You, I'll probably lock you in there. You can stay in your flashback. <laughs> 
What are you doing, Uncle Mick? Ah, well, I know your Uncle Norbert gets all the credit for his inventions, like the time fridge or that wonderful electronic reader that reads books for you so that you don't have to bother. Mine's reading David Copperfield at the moment. Apparently, I'm quite enjoying it. That's nice. And then there was that dog invisibility ray. But what use is a ray gun that can turn anything into an invisible dog? I don't know. We never did find the coffee table. And you know, this place just hasn't been the same since the kitchen ran away. Yes, Uncle, but... What are you actually doing? This? It's a brand new instrument I've invented. It's based on the xylophone. But look, I've nailed a mouse to every key by its tail. I only wish your Auntie Zelda could be here to see this. She loved music, and she always said she thought I might have a talent for it, if I'd ever bothered to learn an instrument or singing. Ah, dear Zelda. You know, I really thought that was going to be the marriage that worked. But one day, I woke up and realised that she wasn't the woman I'd married. Not since Norbert turned her into an invisible dog, anyway. Uncle? I gave it my best, I did. But it's difficult to have a meaningful and satisfying physical relationship with an invisible dog. Uncle? In the end, she got anal sac adenocarcinoma and we had to have her put down. Uncle, those mice are dead. Look, that one's got no head left. Hmm, yes. I'll have to stick to the high notes. Uncle, stop! Oh, I suppose you'd prefer mice to be running around your bedroom while you sleep and getting in your mouth. So you don't like my xylophone. That's okay. Some people are philistines. Come here and have a look at the drawings for my next invention. I call it anti-gravity cheese. Look, floating cheese. How does it work? It's a machine that sucks the gravity out of your cheese. So then it will float, because it's got no gravity in it. But, Uncle... Isn't that impossible? Aha! The word impossible is not in my dictionary. Sounds like a bit of a rubbish dictionary, Uncle. No. You see, I ripped the page out when I was a teenager so that I would always be able to say with complete honesty that I don't know the meaning of the word impossible. Oh, right. On the downside, I don't know the meaning of several other words either, like impotent, imponderable and implausible. I haven't the faintest inkling what any of them might mean. Isn't that a bit impractical? A bit what? Never mind. I'd best be going. Very good. Oh, before you go, have you seen Howard's pet dog anywhere? I've just had a wonderful idea. This is the third for news. However, the decision was overturned after it was revealed that one of the jockeys was completely hollow. Now for tomorrow's newspapers. And the Daily News runs with Dick Dastardly Strikes Again including a screenshot of the moment just before the bullet hit. The Friday paper has Queen Dies in Bullet Swallowing Incident, which shows only a partial understanding of the truth. The Morning Report has chosen to lead with Dennis Quaid Arrested on Drug Charges, with the subheading I was just selling grass, say Star of Inner Space and that one about the unexpected Ice Age. Yagmanovich's Daily Almanac is covering the same story with Has Dennis Got a Quaid to Stand On? Moving over to the Herald, their cover story is Cows missing from field, with the subheading, Farmer says, I sold them. While the national tabloid has gone for a more direct approach to the story with, Man by cow, lot of cow, next to a picture of an empty field, with a naked model in it. Meanwhile, the broadsheet has chosen to prioritise international news, with the headline, 400 million dead in fish flu pandemic. This is the bad news. Oh, you think so good, don't you? You think so good. You're like, oh, look at me, I'm Rufus. I'm the one that can make people's legs grow back. Oh, I'm Rufus. I write much better songs than Howard does. Legs grow back? I'm Rufus. I could pet a dog faster than you could. Actually, that one's probably true. I'll tell you you what I'm better at than you. What? Um, I'm better at predicting things. Yeah, Yeah, go on then, predict something. Okay, I'll predict predict that you'll be dead. You'll be dead by the end of the day. You'll be dead. Dead. So I predict predict you're going to be a dad by the end of the year. Oh, brilliant. You know, I'd like to be a dad. You would, wouldn't you? Because, like, I think it'd be nice to be a dad because then I wouldn't be an orphan anymore, would I? Exactly. Yeah, I'd I'd like that. Okay, well, if you win this game of predictions, then you get to be a dad. What? Yeah, yeah. We'll predict things and then, like, whoever is the best at predicting gets to be a dad. Oh, what, like a competition? Yeah. Like, okay, so um, let's have uh, five minutes to write predictions. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll read them. Yep. And um, then then we'll see who's the best. Yeah. Right? Okay, brilliant. Um, all right, uh, let's play a sting that I wrote, what? like a really good sting that I what? wrote, to cover while we write the predictions. And go. What? What will happen in the future?
future. I don't know. Perhaps Rufus and Howard do. In the future, people will figure out how to illegally download clothes and food. Although That's the quality will probably be will, be, will often be poor, with cheese neither looking nor sounding quite right, and occasionally you'll be able to see someone get out of their seat and leave the supermarket. <laughs> But that would be good. You see, I do think that like um, that fashion and food are two pretty strong industries in the respect yeah. that they, they can still have stores in the high street. They don't necessarily need them because you can get clothes through the post now and everything. And food through the, I get and food, food through, through I get my food through the post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really difficult to get those melons through the letterboxes. <laughs> <laughs> I very rarely order melons for that reason. That I is. order a lot of thin food. <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> America yeah. will change its name to the America. <laughs> in the future, in the future, phones, right, will be so small and in our heads that we'll never be sure if we're getting a phone call or we've just got tinnitus. <laughs> I've got a phones one. Have you? Do you want to hear my yeah, phone? I do. Yeah. Um, that we should put phones in puppies because to stop people losing them so much because you know people lose their phones quite a lot. Right? Yeah. And also, like, they drop them in the toilet sometimes yeah. and stuff like that. Well, if you implant your phone into a puppy, then it'll follow you around. So when you... And if you want your phone... You know, where's my phone? You just go, phone, that and it, is... comes, it comes to you. The question, are you a cat or dog person, will be history when scientists successfully glue a cat to a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The new question. Yeah, there's something in the distant future <laughs> when, they, when they work out how to glue stuff together. Um, all right, so what I, have you got? What have you got? Uh, my next one is that it will rain up <laughs> 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 instead of down, right? Why? <laughs> because all the sky rain will have fallen by then, <laughs> won't it? Ah. And so then it'll have to rain back up again. So everyone will like you know stop wearing shoes on their heads and umbrellas on their feet. Yes. Um, Invisi buildings. <laughs> George Lucas will use CGI to insert R two D two up his own ass. <laughs> um, yeah, good one. Jesus will come again. Jesus will come again, but only when nails no longer exist. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, history will repeat itself nonetheless when they make him swallow a magnet and stick him on a fridge. <laughs> Until dead. OK, um, deep sea driving. <laughs> In the future, a dog will eat its own face. <laughs> Okay, Howard, that is the predictions done. I feel I pretty thank good about you it. Very much. Thank you very much. I was Berlin, yes. Well, now hang on, we've got to check the votes. What? We've got to check the votes, what right? Votes? Well, we've been on Facebook what? getting votes from people. No, like, yeah. You what know, live, about? live on Facebook. We're live on what? Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I didn't Twitter. Know this. What? Yeah, and um, what I didn't know and this. Google Plus. What the hell is Google Plus? <laughs> I have no idea. But we got like a couple of votes from it. Well, I, yeah. Well, anyway, what we'll find you it. have. Um, anyway, well, let's look at the votes. Let's look at the votes, and uh, let's start with you, Howard. Howard, start with you the best have person. got one vote. Yeah, what? One was vote. That, was that good? Uh, well, it's from a it's from a woman. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, uh, she's called Meredith, mm. and she says, um, "I have voted for you because you've got lovely hair." Oh. But I don't know anything else about you. Right. But if you want to have sex on me, that's okay. Um, well, that's nice. That's nice. You've uh, you've made a friend, and um, and you've got an offer of sex. And it looks like uh, it looks like she's willing to share her pension with you as well. <laughs> so that's nice. Meanwhile, my votes. Uh, I've got uh, four hundred and sixty-three thousand two hundred and twenty-four. Beg your ding dong. I think I won. Um, you. We don't even have that many people listening to this. I know. I'll get you, Rufus Penzance, if it's the last thing I do. If you're wondering what you're doing now, you are listening to my. I've 
got a surprise for you. I don't like your surprises. They always end up with me getting hurt or humiliated. They do not. You remember when we were kids and you said, Hey, Rufus, I've got a surprise for you. And then you super glued your pet guinea pig to my ear. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. But your mum couldn't be bothered to take me to the hospital. So she went and got my pet guinea pig and glued it to my other ear and said I had to pretend they were my actual ears. Hey, it was me that got called Noddy at school. Yeah, Noddy and pig ears. Whatever. Stop whinging about the distant past. My new surprise is nothing like that. Go on then. You remember when that travelling doctor came round a few weeks ago and took a blood sample from you? Yeah. That wasn't a doctor. That was me, in a wig. What? You mean I'm not dying of monkey AIDS? Well, not that I'm aware of, no. Then why would you... I have a friend, you see, who's a police forensic scientist, and he checked your DNA against that national database they're not supposed to use for things like this, and he's found out who your mum is. What? Really? Are you serious? Well, here's the results. They arrived today. Go on, then. What's it say? Crapping Flip Howard? I don't believe it. What? I knew I was special. Didn't I always tell you I was special? Well, what does it say? My mum. She was a duchess. A proper British duchess. It all makes sense. A family scandal. She slept with the handsome stable boy, got all up the duff, but couldn't bear to have an abortion because she loved me too much. So does, does this mean that you're royalty? You might want to kneel when you speak to me in the future, commoner. I'm a duke. Duke Rufus. Oh, dear. I'm a, I'm a royal. They're going to want you for treason. Oh, nobbing heck! Oh my god, they're here already! My friend of the police must have tipped them off! Bastard! Come on, I know you can escape in the time fridge. Yes! Quick, get in, get in! No, wait, wait, don't we need to calibrate it? Like set a date or whatever? No time, Ruth! Go quickly! I'll get a message to you somehow, when it's safe for you to come back. Thanks, Howard. You're a true friend. I'm your only friend. You're my true only friend. Quick, go now! Danger! You have access to time fridge without proper calibration. This can lead to painful death. Danger! You have access to time fridge without proper calibration. This can lead to pain from death. Danger! Hello. It's right, you can stop banging our flock. Rufus fell for it, the idiot. Oh. Look, here's that bag of cheese I promised you. Oh, thank you so much. I always wanted a bag of cheese my whole life and I never had one. What about that bag of cheese you had the other week? Aside from that one, this is the best thing I've ever had ever. Okay, go on, toddle along now. Thank you, bye. I'm going, I'm going. Bye now, bye. Bye. <sighs> At very last, the house to myself. Well, listener. Goodness knows how long it'll take Rufus to get back to the present. But until then, I'm going to take full advantage of having the house to myself to seriously kick back and watch the heck out of some telly. Vision. Now we return to our countdown of the top 1,000 hits of 1984. Back in March 1984, an unknown band exploded onto the pop charts with the song that would become their legacy. They called themselves Man Beyond Cow, and they were fronted by new romantic sex symbol Ferguson Blake, who, just a few months after the song was released, died of car crash. The backing vocalist, Rufus Penzance, was never <gasps> seen without his trademark black eye makeup, That's hiding Rufus. what many believe to be serious facial disfigurement but others said was just basic ugliness. Their number two hit single, Woman Girl, is still a favourite at 80s discos all over Germany and Belgium, and has often been described in the music press as mercifully short. Our viewers have voted it at 953 in the top 1,000 hits of 1984. And her legs are long And I can tell from her lack of schlong That she's a woman girl She's a woman girl She is a woman girl A womanly woman girl She's open-minded and she's really smart She's liberated but she doesn't fart Unless she feels like it She often feels like it And then it whips a bit She says that Dodd did it My head. Bread, bread, bread. Bread. 
I asked her if she'd be my girlfriend But it turns out she's a lesbian Well, I assume so I think we get the gist That's why she said no He's a misogynist But now she's dating my best friend Paul Who says she's not a lesbian at all Just didn't like me She thinks you are a prick that seems unlikely And smell of baby sick She is a woman girl She likes to wax her legs She is a woman girl And lay her woman eggs